untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm revisiting the 5 color Joda Legendary deck which got a few new upgrades with the Brother's War. Not gonna spend too much time on the introduction since the deck is mostly the same as before so you can check out my older video on the deck but the main idea is still to try and get Joda in play. This will pump up all our legendaries and as we cast more legendary creatures we can cascade essentially into more legendary creatures to grow our team and overpower the opponent. Partners another key card to give Joda haste and potentially kill the opponent out of nowhere and then we've got a few anthem effects with Sigarda and King Darian as well to grow the team and Katilda a nice two drop that can generate extra mana and most of the creatures in our deck are human so we've got Courtyard and the mana base to help cast them the only non-human is Sigarda so that one's going to be a little bit more difficult to cast with Courtyard and the mana base but it's still a great way to find extra creatures with Coven as well and then the new additions from the Brother's War include Ashnod at 1 mana, which replaces the Street Artist. So instead of an 0-3 Defender, we now have a 1-1 Death Touch that we can cascade into if we play 2-drop with Joda in play. So that's a significant upgrade. And then the Loyal Bodyguard at 2 mana is also great. A 3-3 can sacrifice it. And then legendary creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain Indestructible until end of turn. So that's an awesome way to protect our team from Sweeper Effects, which is one of the main weaknesses of a deck that's essentially playing all creatures and then at 3 mana I'm also playing 2 copies of Gwena which is a 2-3 can tap it to add 2 mana in any combination of colors that we can only spend to cast creature spells or activate abilities of a creature or creature card and then whenever we cast a creature spell with power 5 or greater we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Gwena and untap it so that's the perfect way to ramp into Joda since we'll also fix our mana for it and then as a 5 powered creature we get to untap Gwena put a counter on it and then with the extra mana from Gwena we can still maybe cast another legendary creature and then enable Joda's ability to find yet another legendary and completely take over. And then the mana base has mostly stayed the same, of course, Plaza and Courtyard, important in our five color mana base. And then Plaza also great mana sync in the late game to protect our key legendary creatures got some tri lands and then I've also added underground river and sulfur springs as initial dual lands since we don't have a ton of black sources in the mana base otherwise and then all the channel lands from Kamigawa are great too here since they get a discount from our legendaries so we can often channel them for just a single mana and they give us some added interaction so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw and I think we've got a keeper Danik hopefully find a turn three play and partners into Joda, always powerful. Facing Esper. Bodyguard also will come in handy. Probably still going for Danik first. Thalia we don't care about. And both Bodyguard and Danik won't be able to block if her opponent has a Rafine here to grow Thalia. So I think Danik first probably has a bit more upside. It's going to be a Brutal Cathar to exile it. That's fine. Katilda. That could set up partners next turn. So might have more upside than playing a Bodyguard first. We'll see if there's more removal. Just an attack for four. And a Shieldred, so... We get to potentially play Artai here, killing Shieldred if we'd like, and uh, not take any damage. Could take my draw step and then see what we pick up. If it's a land, I could even play a Joda here. Although I would prefer to have a Bodyguard in play. So, yeah, playing Artai, killing Shieldred might be fine here. And then Artai can make more mana next turn as well. Maybe help us double spell. We would have drawn a Plaza. But that's okay. If Ertai trades for Cathar, we get Danik back, so that's fine as well. Adlin can start making extra 1-1s one and a Jada, so Pun's got some Angels in there too. I guess another 2-mana Legend to go with Rafine. So eat the 1-1, one, one, take 2. And Gwena the draw. So I could play Gwena plus Bodyguard, or Partners plus Bodyguard if my mana allows it, which I think it does. And then we're nicely set up to play Joda plus something else afterwards. Sure. So, tap this for green. Uh, this for red. 
play bodyguard and play partners counters on bodyguard so if they try and remove it I can still make the rest of my team indestructible and at 12 I should be able to survive this turn and next turn could be quite explosive with Joda into another legend Cathar gets around bodyguard since it's only indestructible and not hexproof so goes for partners if that works still have our bodyguard to block Adlin so our opponent just attacks with a flyer so no hasty Joda here unfortunately but it's still going to be quite impactful here so I think what we'll do now is tap Bodyguard, so that if we need to sacrifice it to protect Joda, we still have the most amount of blockers back. It's not gonna work in the face of another Brutal Cathar, but our opponent's already played two, so hopefully they don't have a third. And then next turn, Sigarda should be quite effective. The Dawn Sky, 5-4 Flyer. Okay, at least Sigarda, another flying blocker. And a bank of Joda. So if I play Sigarda, I wouldn't be able to use Courtyard for colored mana. So I guess this is fine. And then see what we get. Shana, that's a good one. So now for opponent attacks. Just by virtue of Adlin existing, they'll be attacking into our huge lifelinker. So that's great. And then might be worth it to play a Gwena as well. And hopefully find a 2-drop that's not in play yet. Danik, another lifelinker. Okay, so I feel pretty safe. Even if they were to somehow exile Sigarda, we can still gain a ton of life with Shana and Danik because of Adlin, which is not optional. So we'll see how our opponent gets out of this mess. Destroy evil on Sigarda, protect the team. One card left in hand, and a Rafine I don't think is gonna save them. And our opponent explodes, awesome, close one here against Asper Legends, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's promising. We've got the partners into Joda, and we'll play a tap line first, not in a hurry to play Ashnod. Against Moderat, a 1-1 one -one death touch could still come in handy, so we'll try it. Mostly hoping to have a creature in play before playing partners so we can immediately get some counters. But partners into Joda is where it's at. Okay, Phoenix Jake picks up a plus one counter that can fly over Ashnod times two. And Catilda was a decent draw as well. So let's name human. Play Catilda. And then we'll sit back with Ashnod for now. Could even uh, channel Soaring City by controlling two legendaries. So if opponent plays a three mana creature, I might go for it. Could also bounce Etching or Phoenix Chick. It's gonna be a reckless impulse for now. Finding Mechanized Warfare times two. And they've got a land for and the festivities. Wow. That's incredibly backbreaking. Well, I better bounce a creature here. And I guess we'll make it the uh, etching, which will take a little bit longer to get going. We lose both of our creatures. Can still play partners, hopefully find a land for Joda. But that was a setback. Alright, could also try and play Joda first by just playing a tap land now. So we're going to take next turn uh, 5 damage and the turn after... It's going to be at least seven. So yeah, I can't wait to play Joda first. I have to play partners. And then at least the partners can hold off a 2-2 Phoenix chick if they play Warfare here. 
So there it is. If they also have a burn spell, we're in trouble. Kumano. So 2-3 first strike would kill the Phoenix Chick, even though it can deal 3 damage technically. So no attacks. Gwenoth a draw. So can play that. And then Gwena could make two mana here, not quite enough to play Joda, sadly. And uh, I guess we'll keep Gwena back on the off chance her opponent has a haste creature on the ground. Or we could attack with it to start applying a bit of pressure. Close call. I think we keep Gwena back. And then I'll just play this tapped. No attacks. Can play Joda. Gwena triggers, pump the team, give Joda haste, and that's a lethal attack. Alright, close one here against Monored. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and this hand's a little awkward. We can cast turn to Thalia, even Bodyguard, but we're pretty far from Sigarda, no blue for Danik. So, let's try Mulligan. This seems more promising. Turn to Katilda. Maybe Artai can go, keep Shana, which can potentially provide a bit more card advantage, and Sigarda. Putting blue whites. Katilda can still set up Adlin on three, although we won't get the extra token from it. So if her opponent's on blue white control, that's going to be a tough matchup without a bodyguard or Thalia. Okay, Urza, so more of an artifact deck. And yeah, I guess Lagrella to get rid of it, so they won't be able to play a Might Stone and Weak Stone next turn. And now we're set up to play Joda next turn, which would be exciting. Joda luckily survives the minus five, minus five from the Might Stone and Weak Stone, so that's pretty key as well. Opponent passes with her mana up, and how about we play Athalia and see what's up, as opposed to tapping out for Joda. And then I could still play a 3-drop afterwards, although we may be overextending at that point. Silver Scrutiny for 2 in response. So what do we think? If I play Shana or Adlin and our opponent goes planes into Depopulate, we're going to be pretty sad. So I think I keep things as is. And just attack for 3. Possible attacking with Katilda wasn't worth it in case her opponent main phases a Wandering Emperor to minus two. Since we really need Katilda for mana, opponent gets rid of Thalia, that's fine. And a Bank Buster, so now the coast is clear for Joda. Although partners first is probably better. Grow Lagrella. Hit for four, and then now. A Joda's going to be much more impactful with partners giving it haste. But our opponent's got the sweeper, sadly. Alright, time to rebuild. Maybe with a Shana. Can still attack into Urza and draw a bunch of cards. So I think we'll give that a try, as opposed to playing something into a counter spell. They don't have enough power to crew Bankbuster, but Wandering Emperor could get rid of Shana. So we could counter it with Artai instead. Although then I don't get to draw off Shana, of course. That seems acceptable. So we'll just gain three. A Mind Stone and Weak Stone is still very much a concern. And our opponent gets to see quite a few cards now. 
So far we haven't seen any counter spells at least, so maybe we can resolve Joda and get a nice attack in. It's gonna be a Teferi. Okay. Urza attacks, we'll take it. Opponent gets to untap it. And then three mana left over here for a depopulate. So that wipes the board, we draw a card. So we'll give partners another try. Opponents back up to 17. So it's definitely an uphill battle here. Another Teferi. Can make a significant token that will grow with Bankbuster and Teferi both drawing extra cards. So last chance to make a meaningful attack. And there's Buseju to set up Joda. Okay, four counters. And both at Teferi. I guess we could split it up. The token's gonna grow up to a 3-3 at least. So opponent can choose which Teferi they keep alive. Still feels like we're pretty far behind. Opponent will get to see quite a few cards, potentially another sweeper. Our hand's not bad. Problem is, these cards aren't great on an empty board to recover from a board wipe. And our opponent keeps the fairy who slows the sunset, so could imply they have another temporal pilgrim in hand. And yeah, as long as they're playing to fairy planeswalkers, we're fine, since we can easily outsize the tokens with Joda. But I have to imagine there's more than uh, just a Teferi coming up. Teferi minusing, so they're looking for answers. And an Urza is acceptable. Into a Celestis. So it doesn't seem to me like they found what they were looking for necessarily. And we can play Sigarda now. And fly over to finish off the ferry, perhaps. And Joda finds Catilda to make more mana. So I could play an Adlin. If I tap the partners here, for instance. And we might as well go all out. Bangbuster Cruise. But it's tapped. Is a make disappear, perhaps? It is. With casualty. So if I tap Joda and partners, I can still pay for it. Now that we found Catilda. So that actually works out. Unless they have another one in hand. And we could put the opponent to four. I think we're still better off finishing off the ferry. And then Coven can find another human. Danik will do. So all of a sudden, opponent's in trouble. They couldn't find a sweeper last turn, it seemed like. Although maybe they have a Might Stone to transform Urza. Mending to draw and discard. So game's far from over. But felt like we were hopelessly behind and now we might have a chance... There's a Might Stone, so they should be able to transform Urza, and that can exile two permanents, so Joda plus partners, for instance, if they meld. Opponent shrinks down Catilda, so now if they get rid of Joda, Catilda also dies. We'll still have our Flyer, so we should be able to take care of Urza. I guess that also works, but we have a creature we can give haste with partners. Or opponent can make some chumping soldiers. Okay. So let's get back on the board. And probably start with Danik to find our 1-drop, so we don't risk finding it with our 4-drop. And then I can choose between Adlin or Lagrella, or just Sigarda, which can fly over to kill Urza as well. Just make sure we have the right mana to still cast everything. 
So I'll just be very careful and diligent here. So blue, this can make white. And then we still have Sigarda mana available. There's Ashenod. And there's Sigarda. Which finds another Denik. That's a little unfortunate, but that's fine. Still goes to the graveyard where we can bring it back. And then haste on Sigarda. And still killing Urza. The rest can go face. And find a bodyguard, which we could certainly use here. Okay, and once Urza is dealt with, opponent's stop decking pretty much. I guess they can still flash back Mending. But we have some nice leftovers in case of another board wipe. Silver Scrutiny for four, leaving enough mana for a depopulate. And there it is. All right. So now we could still be in trouble. Opponent's still at 21, so they've got plenty of life to work with. So definitely want to play a bodyguard if we get a chance. Bodyguard plus maybe get back Danik and then next turn Adlin. Or just get Adlin in play to try and deal the most amount of damage next turn. So yeah, very close game. Could still go either way. We went from very favored to our opponent drawing at the right sequence. And now it's still anyone's game. Another plaza could also be used to protect our creatures from removal. So, can get back Danik and then keep a plaza, I think, as opposed to playing Gwen or Lagrella. And then attack. At least Adlin plays around a Wandering Emperor. I Ganju will force Plaza. Keep our bodyguard in play. So that works. Opponent takes a bunch of damage. And another Faithful Mending. So opponents pretty far into their deck already. They might have a replacement Urza and Mightstone. And Mightstone would have been a reason to use Bodyguard there instead of Plaza, since Plaza can protect from the minus five, minus five, whereas Bodyguard cannot. We get to untap. Thalia seems good to play now. Could force a response. And then we still have our second Plaza. Question is whether our bodyguard needs to attack or if we keep it back so it's not exposed to a wandering emperor. But I can always use plaza to protect bodyguards and then use bodyguards in response to another sweeper. Okay, hole breaker was unexpected. So that can pretty easily take over the game by itself now. Blocks Adlin. I guess we'll use bodyguard to protect. And then I could play Lagrella, maybe force them to bounce a creature before damage. That didn't work. So now, do we go for Lagrella on Hullbreaker, which they can just bounce by flashing back Mending? I think it's do or die here. Opponent dissipates and gets to bounce. And still crank our clue token. Interesting, opponent did not bounce anything with the hole breaker. Okay, I guess we'll pass. Opponent back up to 14. And we probably need another Joda here to cross the finish line. Still a few copies in the deck. And there it is. Another well, opponent can bounce it with a hole breaker. So I guess it doesn't hurt to play it here. Mm, 
memory dilution response. Likely to find more answers, although our opponent's seen most of their deck by now. Can still attack with our flyer. And then might as well send the 1-1 since we'll get a replacement. Could also attack with Thalia since we have a backup. Sure. Deal 6. And make a clue. A union to gain some life, trigger a hullbreaker. Well, this game took an unexpected twist. Celestus so keeps triggering, opponent down to 15 cards now. And a few on the bottom that they've already seen with Deluge. Destroy evil on Adlin. Bounce Denik. And a Sunset Ravelry with uh, maximum value here. So 13 cards remaining and our opponent needs to start beating down. So if I play Thalia into Joda, they probably just counter Joda. Can keep the 1-1s back to Chump Holebreaker. I guess if these are a human, so they also make mana with Katilda, so I can maybe start there. Sure. And then play Athalia using the humans. And then play Joda. And then I can still chump. Scrutiny response for two. Sends back Joda, no attacks. So 10 cards remaining, but a hole breaker with a lot of instants still in the graveyard. Mindstone can take out one of our creatures. Katilda down. Happy to chump hole breaker. So yeah, 10 cards left. Don't know if we'll survive that long. But we'll give it a shot. So step one, as always, probably Thalia. And then I might, instead of playing Joda, just play Dane and Gwena. Or maybe get back the author Danik. Just slightly more mana efficient, although if Gwena sticks around, it's going to be easier to play Joda. Potentially even several times. Opponent's going to make it disappear. Bounces a token now. Okay, so nine cards left. Happy to chump. Bangbuster bounces Denik. So play Joda, get it countered, and then we can play Denik. Wandering Emperor response. We can also start making Samurai. Do I want to make a flying Danik here, perhaps? Eight cards remaining. But uh, yeah, now we're falling pretty far behind with the Wandering Emperor to apply pressure to. So as long as they have a few more spells to cast, they can probably take us out. So close, then Scrutiny into Depopulate was the big turning point, or I guess the final turning point in the game. Opponent's got five cards left now. 
makes another samurai. And a Teferi now too. Bounce Denik. And now I'm pretty sure we're just uh, dead on board. Alright, GG's. What a game. We did our best, but a Hullbreaker Horror was the final nail in the coffin. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems promising. Even though two white sources means we wouldn't necessarily be able to play Jodown Curve, unless we maybe find something like Gwena or Catilda along the way. Turn 2 could play Thalia to slow the opponent down. Also looks like they're on the soldier's deck, so don't expect too many non-creature spells. Opponent mono whites. And they've got their own Thalia, that's fine. Play Danik and a tapped headquarters. And next turn we could play partners already. Maybe put some counters on Denik. Opponent with a Guardian of New Benalia. And King Darian's pretty good too, but uh, partner seems better. And do we want to attack here is the question. Seems like a reasonable attack. Opponent could have the one mana removal spell at sorcery speed that exiles. So if they have a fourth line, they can get rid of the partners. For now, we can take out everyone, so force them to discard a card as well. Discards another guardian. So this seems like a pretty good trade. 3 for 1, gain 4 life, still have our partners in play. And we can bring back Danik with Disturb. Okay, Bowen's got the Shield of Argive, that's a good one. So that can threaten to make an army of soldiers. And we're getting closer to playing Joda. Still have the double white, so we won't be able to play it next turn necessarily. But uh, Ertai killing Shield of Argive seems reasonable here. Make sure it doesn't get out of hand. And then we can put counters on Thalia or on Artai. And then I could attack with all if Thalia trades for a card in the opponent's hands. It's not the end of the world, although I guess with Joda and King Darian coming up, I don't necessarily want to trade. Opponent falls to 13. So their opponent still needs a fourth plane, so if they want to get rid of the partners with the uh, one mana sorcery. It's going to be another shield of Argive instead. So if we play King Darien, partners puts three counters on the next creature. So we could grow King Darien himself, or maybe grow Thalia. Could also get the flying Danik going, hit for five. Plus maybe Ertai on the ground. We get to untap. Sigarda also pretty good. Seems better than Darien here. Can give Sigarda haste. Attack with Ertai. And then we should have Coven enabled for Sigarda as well. Might have been better off keeping the courtyard untapped in case we find Ashnod with Sigarda and still want a player. So that resolves. Three counters on Sigarda. And... Let's say we attack with all what happens. Block Thalia. Block partners. Still take 13. Yeah, that seems fine. Find Catilda. And our opponent just takes it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And this hand is missing the mana to play turn 2 Catilda. But as soon as we find a land here, most of the lands will do it. Then Catilda can ramp towards Joda. Should be able to play Shana as well. So I think this is a keep. And we'll start with Courtyards. 
Naming human. Play Ashnod. Do have quite a few tapped lands, but also a few multicolor lands that help play Catilda. And I'll take the tri land here. Could play Shana before Catilda, although Catilda sets up turn 4 Joda. Opponent on Grixis, so we can expect quite a bit of removal. Unlicensed Hurst luckily doesn't affect us too much. And the partner is also a good one. Yeah, I'll play Catilda. If our opponent removes it, we may be able to curve partners into Joda anyways. Not interested in making power stones. Just a tap plan from the opponents. And if we need to play around a counter spell, we can always uh, adjust and not play Joda, but go for the throw it kills Catilda. All right, partners looks good here. Two counters on Ashnod. And now Partners has a big target on its back, which maybe frees up Joda to resolve and stick around. And then let's read Denik. Cards and graveyards can be the targets of spells or abilities, so the hearse will no longer be able to do its thing. Denik does not stop a corpse appraiser, I believe. Okay, Shana, attack, and then we can draw a card, seems good. I guess they could have a cut down for partners, that's the best they can do. But now it's too late, so probably just hers holding priority. And then I don't necessarily want to trade for a corpse appraiser. So end of turn draw. And then next turn we should be able to play Joda with the partners in play, hopefully. And we still have some good leftovers. Five mana is Invoke Despair territory, which would be totally fine here. Just sacrifice Ashnod, keep partners, and Shana. Opponents got the Invoke Despair. So all according to plan. Opponent stepped out. Time for Joda. And then we even have the leftover mana to pay for Shana. Probably could have saved myself one damage by playing this first. But uh, opponent seems pretty dead regardless. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems promising. Turn to Thalia, bodyguard, to protect our team. And then double Joda, so we'll just need a couple more lands or a bit of ramp to get there. Gwena would be one of our better turn 3 plays, so we can set up a turn 4 Joda. I'll take a Catilda as well. Turn 1 Mountain into Swisspear, so Thalia should be effective. And with this mana we can still play a Bodyguard next turn. Best they can do is a 1 mana play with Fire, killing Thalia. Second Swift Spear instead. And make that three, but no attacks. Okay, Bodyguards to protect Thalia. Play a tapped Garden. And pass. Hopefully find something we can play next turn, but we are looking at a turn five Joda. And uh, end of festivities. I think it's worth it to protect Thalia here. We'll get to soak up an attack from the Swift Spears and make future plays from the opponents more difficult. Our opponent just plays an Epicure, passes, and then it was a good pickup. Did not quite have the mana to keep up Iganjo, but would probably want to keep it as a land for Joda anyways. And we should have just uh, right mana here, headquarters for blue, this for black, and then white, red, green. Impulse finds two mountains. Serpone won't be able to play another non-creature spell here. And it's time for Joda. Still at a healthy 16 life. 
and now Danik's gonna grow, which should put us out of range. Next turn, Adlin find a 2-drop, and that's just too much for the red deck to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems reasonable. How do we sequence our mana? This seems fine on 1. And then I can choose between a turn 2 Denik or Bodyguard. Turn 1 Swamp. Yeah, I guess Bodyguard, since we have another one. So if our opponent wants to take it out, it's not too bad. Also dodges cut down, which your opponent could have for one mana, and could kill Danik, so we make their turn less efficient. Bankbusters, your opponent a more controlling black deck. Like well, Relath the draw, so for now play Danik, hit for three. And setting up for partners next turn with Bodyguard to protect it. And then we can start growing our lifelinker. So off to a decent start. Cut down on Danik. I think that's fine. Not gonna sacrifice bodyguards since I would rather protect partners. And underdog. So that can crew bankbuster to hit us for four. Which your opponent prefers over keeping it on defense. Katilda's not bad either, but uh, partner seems better here. Grow bodyguard hit for five. I think we're still on the beatdown. And then we have a way to potentially save the partners from removal. Cut down one of the most efficient answers to it, so it's gonna be an infernal grasp instead. Do they cut down in response? Nope. Opponent still loses two life since Infernal Grasp resolves, it just doesn't actually kill the partners. And we drew another one. So now Catilda into Bodyguard might be the play. And then we can grow Bodyguard to attack past the 4-4 Bankbuster. And next turn we can make a flying Danik. So your opponent's in trouble. And down to 10. And not even Shieldred's gonna be good enough necessarily. A Liliana, we just sacrifice Gatilda. A fight? And you think you can win. And then next turn, Danik get two counters would be 10 damage, so if that's all they have, we should have them. Our tie also would have worked. Alright, so pretty clean game against Mono Black Control and Bodyguard serving us well, protecting our partners. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and our hand seems fine. No Jodai in sight, but uh, some good early creatures, a bit of removal with Lagrella, and Sigarda we might be able to cast as well. Up against a red-green, typically an aggressive deck, Stalwart. Not a card you see in every deck. Can make one mana, tapping an artifact or creature. So we've got a good spread of colors, although these two not the best at casting Sigarda. Just a tapped Rockfall Veil for now. Turn 2, Thalia or Denik is an interesting question. I think I'll go for Thalia. Wormlet could point towards some artifacts in their deck, which we can maybe make one more expensive. And then Lagrella might end up going after the Wormlets, although currently I'm unable to cast Lagrella. So Stonekeeper is the play. Makes a power stone. Opponent's got two cards left. And a voltage surge to finish off Thalia. Take three. Okay, now I could play Lagrella and go after the uh, Wormlet, for instance. Although I also don't mind playing Denik to next turn grow it with partners so we can gain some life back. So I'll try that instead. 
now with a green source we are also capable of casting Sigarda next turn. A reckless Impulse, finding Wormlets and a removal spell. So they could cast the 3 damage removal on Denik, which is pretty good here. It's going to be a Wormlet instead. And then with a land I guess they can still remove Denik, make an extra Power Stone, growing the two Wormlets. So some pretty cool synergy from our opponents. The good news for us at least is that they're out of cards in hand. So if we can withstand this early onslaught, we should be able to stabilize. And uh, yeah, Sigarda's not a bad way to do it. So let's try that. One more artifact and the Wormlet gains Death Touch, so that's a potential concern. But just a land for now. Okay. So let's try and stabilize here. I think I'm just gonna play Catilda and keep up Soaring City here for instant speed interaction. Another Stone Seeker means they can grow Wormlets, so those gain Death Touch. opponent goes all out. So I can bounce the biggest wormlets. Could also bounce an artifact so it loses death touch and then uh, we can block the 3-3 three, three wormlets. Maybe that's better. Or I guess bounce the stone seeker. So they also have to sacrifice a power stone and lose death touch and then save myself a bit of damage. Although they will be able to replay stone seeker to grow the author wormlet. But maybe that's okay. And then block a stalwart as well. Take five. And then Lagrella could go after Wormlets. Thalia. So if we play Lagrella, can tap Catilda to still play Thalia. Is that enough to survive? I think so. We'll hang back. And then I should be able to double spell partners and Danik now. And Shanna's great too, especially with partners giving it haste. So I think we've turned the corner now officially. So that can attack, Sigarda can attack, Coven enabled, can try and find Joda. opponent takes it and I could pay one to draw I'll keep an extra blocker back and our opponent explodes awesome so yeah very interesting deck from our opponent but uh, was no match for five color humans so we got to see our deck in action and overall pretty satisfied with how we performed the main matchup that we're going to struggle with is kind of a dedicated control deck with lots of board wipes although even there we have bodyguard now as a new tool to help us out so it's definitely a winnable matchup thalia and bodyguard being our best cards and then just trying to get a quick joda in play is probably our best bet but uh yeah Otherwise, seems like a powerful deck with a few significant upgrades from the Brothers War. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.